Hello and welcome to another episode of Moderate Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen. Today we're going to be talking about building a GitHub webhook, a serverless GitHub webhook actually. And I already have the code kind of written up. I just wanted to walk through it because I uh, didn't really feel like live coding it today. Um, I already had some of this lying around and kind of pieced it together and maybe we'll do some live coding because it may not work because I, I really just pieced this back together from some stuff I had lying around, but I thought it was kind of a fun example to show. Um, so let's let's get let's get to it. Um, let's start with the the main code here. I think this is the most interesting and and yet at the same time kind of the least interesting parts. And what I mean by that is um, this is actually where all the functionality happens, uh, but it's actually not where all the cool bits are. Um, and so you can see here we we instantiate this new GitHub webhook component. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a GitHub webhook that uh, actually invokes um, a serverless function that does whatever we want on our behalf. And so you can see here, we kind of pass in some parameters. We say, hey, you know, the repository should be Pulumi TV. Uh, you, we should look for these events. In this case, it's events related to issues. And then we're going to um, also uh, give it our GitHub, our token, uh, which we, we need, obviously, in order to use the GitHub API. Uh, and then we have a handler. This is just an inline function that we get to write. This is actually going to be part of our Lambda that gets executed, this part of our serverless function that's gonna get executed uh, on our behalf. And this is a fairly simple uh, uh, function. You can see we create a new uh, instantiation of the OctaKit, this is the REST API SDK uh, for GitHub. And then we just check to see if it's a closed action. If it's not, we ignore it. Uh, if it is, uh, then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll check the labels. And uh, here, let me just add in some additional logging. And so if we, if we uh, find this fixed uh, label, then we won't do anything. Uh, but if we don't find the fixed label, then we're going to reopen the issue. So, you know, you can totally imagine using some kind of workflow like this in your own repository where, you know, you want to make sure that the, uh, that any issue that's closed is actually fixed. And so, you, or has some kind of a fixed label to it, right? Or a fixed, not the fixed. So any, any label, um, but here I've chosen fixed and uh, yeah, we just, we just make the relevant, uh, uh, SDK call. So this is all very simple, but like I said, this is actually where all the, this is, this is the actual meat of the program in some sense, but none, none of the interesting bits are here. And the reason for that is because everything's abstracted away by this GitHub webhook thing. And what is this GitHub webhook thing? Um, that's actually where it gets really interesting. And, you know, I, I think in, on Modern Infrastructure Wednesday, we haven't talked as much actually about component resources in Pulumi. Uh, and that's what the GitHub webhook is. Um, it's a component resource. This actually isn't a resource you can see that's part of, you know, it's not part of uh, the, the, the GitHub provider. It's not part of the AWS provider. It's a component resource that we wrote ourselves, that I wrote here in this case. And so what component resources allow you to do, and now I'm, I'm in the definition of this component resource, is it allows you to really uh, build reusable components that you can vend to other people. And so, you know, in this case, like this GitHub webhook is a reusable component. Like I could use it for lots of other webhooks, right? I could also instantiate, you know, three other webhooks here that do different things. They could look at different events. They could have different handler code. They could do totally different things, but it's using the same underlying abstraction. That's one of the cool powers of Plumi is, you know, because we're using languages, uh, we get to use all the language uh, constructs, including, uh, you know, classes. And in this case, abstraction through this component resource. And so what does our component resource actually do? And you can see we, we kind of have this thing here to kind of register this component resource with a specific type. Um, and then we create a bunch of other underlying resources that kind of this component resource abstracts away. Uh, so first it creates this random string, which is effectively a shared secret. Uh, if you've ever used GitHub webhooks before, uh, you, you'll know that uh, you can have a shared secret that this way um, any calls coming to your endpoint uh, have to have the secret to, in order to prove that it's actually coming from GitHub. And then we use uh, API gateways, uh, API to then have a serverless function sitting behind it. And actually here, the AWS X, this is the crosswalk library that I've shown a few times uh, on Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. This, this API component itself is actually a component resource. I mean, so you can compose component resources within component resources. I um, mean, so this API actually abstracts away a lot of the uh, complexity of actually standing up an API gateway endpoint. Here, you know, we, we're actually able to just provide a very simple route uh, with a path, a method, and then here, another event handler. 
And this event handler wraps, actually you can see later on, uh, the handler that we end up passing in. Um, and so this you know, takes care of that initial logic around uh, decoding that secret and making sure that it actually is uh, proving that it actually is coming from GitHub. And then later we can parse the rest of the event uh, and then we can actually um, then pass this to the handler that's passed into this particular component resource. So this handler is whatever's passed in. In our case, we passed in this code. Um, and so now we will you know, pass back the token along with the request, the event information as well. And then uh, you know, whatever happens, the event handler can do whatever it wants to do. Um, and then you know, we'll, we'll finally return success. And so that's actually where all the meat of this happens. Um, and then uh, we then kind of, so we have, we have this API endpoint we've created, we have the shared secret, and then finally, at the very end, we create the repository webhook. And so the repository webhook is going to, you know, uh, listen to those events on this repository, and then for the configuration, it'll have that secret, and then it'll register the URL for our API gateway endpoint. So let's actually run this and see if it works. Um, so let me run blue me up. And let's see what happens, because actually I actually haven't run this yet. Um, all right. So one thing to note actually in terms of configuration here is uh, I have already configured my stack to uh, use US West 2 using the Pulumi organization and obviously have my token as a secret. Um, okay, so let's look at the preview. So we have this, this is the component resource we defined and you can see kind of underlying this component resource is that API we talked about, which will have the actual function. Um, the, this, this function is actually going to be attached to this API. And then we also have uh, uh, the secret and then also the repository webhook. So that sounds good. Let's create all that. And while this is running, I guess we can pop open our browser and uh, get get going here to see if uh, this actually works. So let me bring up a browser window. Uh, okay, great. So it worked. Uh, and you can see here uh, we had the stack output. Um, actually, don't remember where I put that, but we must have exported somewhere. Uh, and so you can see we have this URL, um, which is great. And so, yeah, so let's let's try uh, our webhook. So actually, there's, a, there's actually a weird bug in GitHub that I already know about that I'm gonna circumvent real quick. So let's look at our webhooks. So you can see it's registered for issues. Oops, let me log in here with my key. Um, so you can see this is the, the payload URL. This is what we defined earlier. And uh, so this is all being, you know, driven uh, by Pulumi. And uh, the, the bug I know about, by the way, is that here, for whatever reason, even though you can see here it has application JSON, and uh, here I've actually also defined um, that it should use application JSON as the configuration content type. Uh, and it is here, uh, for whatever reason, the very first request uh, GitHub sends is using this odd, uh, the other content encoding, which is the URL form encoded. So um, let's hit update webhook just in case. Um, and I believe subsequent invocations should do the right thing. So let's let's create an issue. Still typing 2020. Um, okay, cool, cool. So we create this issue. Now let's actually go back to, uh, let me just open this a new tab. Let's look at our webhooks. And we'll, oh, great, it, it success. And you can see that, that it is delivered this, this opened issue. And you can see we, this is the issue we just opened. So let's look at actually what that looks like on the API gateway side. So if I go back here, oops. And actually let me, authenticate first to a few things before I show this to you. I'm going to pause my recording while I authenticate a couple things. I'll be right back.
Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was actually connected to the right AWS account um, and that I was uh, correct here. Okay, so so yeah, okay, so great. So we looked at, um, let's look at the activity. So this is, this is our update and uh, it created, this is, you know, everything here. Uh, and if we go to the resources, we have the actual functions. Let's pop that open uh, in the, the AWS console. And here uh, we can actually see the invocations that, that took place. So if we go to uh, monitoring and we look at the logs in CloudWatch, we should see our own uh, logging that we had in our function. So let's verify that that's true and verify that it's working correctly. Oh boy, my connection is really odd today. Um, okay, cool. So let's look at this. So this is the first issue that uh, seems like it had some weird error, but you can see here, that was the first one where it had the wrong payload type. Uh, here you can see ignoring, ignoring non-close events. So we opened an issue. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a close event, so we don't care about it. Okay, let's go back to this issue. We'll close the issue. And if we, oh, and then it, I, you'll notice I didn't touch anything and it reopened. So if we go back to here and we refresh this log, we can see it says, you know, checking labels, because uh, if we look at our code um, in our handler, uh, you know, if it's, if it's, if it actually is closed, it's going to keep going. It's going to check the labels. And after checking the labels, it's going to realize there's no fixed label. It's going to reopen the issue. And that's exactly what happened. And so now if we actually affix the fixed label, oops, there's no fixed label in this repo. Let's, let's use resolution fixed and let's update our, um, let's actually up, oops, let's get rid of that. Need the repo. Let's do this and then let's actually update our code to also look for uh, resolution fixed and I can run Pulumi up. And just like other Pulumi programs, this is, again, it's a desired state model. So we really shouldn't have to update, you know, we don't have to update the webhook. We don't have to update too many other things here. We really just need to update the actual function code. Um, and so uh, let's, let's run this and this should only update the, uh, the function code. Let's give it a sec. Something's very odd with my internet connection today. There we go. So you can see the only diff we had was the code. So yes, let's update the code. And uh, as soon as the code is updated, we can then uh, close the issue and make sure this all, all works. Okay, so let's, great. So now the, the code's been updated and we'll come here. We have resolution fixed. Okay, and this is, yep, resolution fixed. So close, I think this can be closed now. Cool. So let's go back to our, so let's wait a sec. All right. Didn't, didn't reopen it. That's a good sign. Let's go back to our, uh, our logging here and, um, let's refresh this so we can, Oh, there we go. There's our new log stream and you can see checking labels, but didn't have to do anything because, uh, I guess I could have added more logging to, you know, say, Hey, if we did have this, you know, log something else, but you can see we didn't log the reopening part because, well, in fact, we had the right label. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of walk through today this idea of having a component resource and how useful it is to actually build uh, these abstractions with component resources. Uh, you know, you can see this, this actually abstracts away an API. Uh, it abstracts away this API gateway that's uh, fronting this Lambda. And then it's tying that together with this GitHub repository webhook. And then that way, this, this particular component, you can, you can totally imagine I could NPM publish this particular package and anyone could use it. Um, so yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you next time on Modern Infrastructure Wednesday.